Rice Krispies. Snap, crackle, pop. Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, Seven Silver Bullets. Hey, kids, here's a sweet treat idea you'll want to try. Take some fresh, crisp Kellogg's Rice Krispies and mix it up with some sweet, plump, delicious marshmallows, and you've got a sweet treat to eat. We call this combination Kellogg's Crispy Squares. There's a simple, easy nine-minute recipe for Kellogg's Crispy Squares right on the side panel of the Kellogg's Rice Krispies package. How about making a batch tonight, for instance? Kellogg's Crispy Squares make mighty tasty eating. Make some. <laughs> dangerous job of bringing law and order to the Old West, United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big deputy Jingles many times rode with six guns and sudden death, but never were the guns more deadly or death closer than when they followed the trail of seven silver bullets. A little closer to the shore, my friend. As usual, I'd like to do the job with just one shot. Now, if you're so particular, why don't you paddle the canoe? That's your job, Blaze. I supply the brains and the nerve. Others do the work and take the chances. Yeah, that's the way you operate. But someday one of the poor suckers that does your dirty work for you is going to sneak up behind you and blow out them fancy brains of yours. It won't be you, Blaze. You haven't the nerve. If you ever try to leave me or kill me, all the papers that I have hidden will be delivered to the law. You know what that means. You'll wind up at the end of a rope. All right, I know it. So shut up. Shh, quietly, my friend. We don't want your quarry to hear us coming. He's not my quarry. You're the one that wants him shot. I'm no killer. Ah, but you are. You killed before, and I have the proof. All right, I killed a man in a fight. I didn't sneak up in a canoe and shoot him in the back. Well, this will be a new experience, won't it? Live closer to the bank, Blaze. What's that? <laughs> Just a bullfrog. You are nervous, aren't you? Of course I'm nervous. Very well. Let's get it over with. Stop the canoe. Good. A lamp burning on the table, and there he sits. That should be an easy shot. Darren, you're not even human. Oh, but I am. Human enough to want the power and the money that the man in there has tried to keep me from getting. He is in my way, Blaze. Get rid of him. No, I won't do it. Very well. When they hang you for murder, I shall be very happy to attend. Mm. All right, give me the rifle. There it is. Loaded with just one silver bullet. So don't miss. Yeah, I know. If I don't get him with one shot, you'll turn me in, too. I won't miss. What's that? Wild ducks, hundreds of them. Paddle out onto the lake before someone hears all the noise and comes to investigate. What do we do next? Go back to town and forget that we took a canoe ride in the dark. Uh, just try and forget. You'd better forget. By the way, Blaze, that was an excellent shot. <laughs> We should have camped out at sundown instead of trying to ride into Hansonville in the dark. It's just a few miles farther, Jingles, and it's important that we get there as soon as we can. Oh, sure. Every time we start out on one of these trips, it's a hurry-up job. Joker knows where he's going, but it's so dark I can't see his ears from the saddle. Then quit worrying and let Joker follow the trail. Nah, that's no good either. Why not? Because when Joker sees a branch he can get under, he goes under it. He don't care what happens to me. Ow! Doggone you, Joker. I got more lumps on my head than a horny toad. Now quit cutting corners and stay out in the middle of the train. Take it easy, Jingle. Oh. We'll hit town pretty quick, and you can get a nice room at the hotel with a feather bed. If I get there alive. Hold it, partner. Whoa, my child. Whoa, my whoa, whoa, Joker. What's the matter, Bill? Something's happening out there on the lake. What kind of something? Something that's got the ducks all stirred up, and a minute ago I thought I heard voices. Out on the lake? On a dark night like this? That's right. 
Oh, now, who'd be prowling around in a boat or a canoe at night? I don't know, and I don't care. If anybody's crazy enough to be out there, it'd serve them right if they fell overboard. Now, come on, Bill, let's get to town. Well, I guess we might as well. Get out there, Buttshot. Come on, Joker, get along. I still think something isn't right out there. You're the most suspicious man I know, Bill Hickok. Why, it's so dark you can't even see the lake. Somebody might be fishing out there, or maybe a moose is swimming. <laughs> Anything might have scared up those silly old ducks. Call it a hunch if you want to, partner. Let's take this other trail. Get around there, Buckshot. What other trail? <laughs> I can't even see the one we're on now. The trail that leads to that cabin on the shore of the lake. What cabin? The one with the light in the window. Bill, you got eyes like an Indian. I don't see any cabin, any window, any light, or any lake. What are you looking at, anyhow? I'm looking at a little square of light on the water. You see it over there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that light's reflected from a candle or a lamp. Because it's square, it must come from a window. If there's a window, there must be a cabin or a house, and there must be a trail to it from the main trail. That's easy, isn't it? Maybe so. I wouldn't have figured that out in ten million years. There's a cabin right ahead. You see the light from the window? Yeah. Get over there, Joker. There must be somebody home, too. Whoa, Buckshot. Oh, oh, Joker, whoa. Seems sort of silly to stop just on a hunch, but at least we can find out who lives here. <clears throat> well, whoever it is is going to be surprised to see us in the middle of the night. Nobody answers, Bill. I'll try again. Well, nobody home, I guess. Take a look in the window, Jingles. Bill! What's up, partner? Your hunch was right, Bill. There's a man in there, and he's dead. Wranglers, eating beats talking when it comes to a bowl of Kellogg's Rice Krispies for breakfast. Always so fresh and crisp, they speak right up with their cheerful snap, crackle, pop, just as soon as you touch them with milk. And another treat I'll bet lots of you fellas and gals like is big, plump, tasty marshmallows, right? Well, sir, you take something as fresh, crisp, and delicious as Kellogg's Rice Krispies, and you mix it all up with something as sweet, plump, and appealing as marshmallows, and it just figures you got yourself a real treat. Well, sir, we call that Kellogg's Marshmallow Crispy Squares, so easy to fix, too. The nine-minute recipe for this dandy treat is right on the Kellogg's Rice Krispies package, so easy that even you young cowpokes won't have any trouble of following it. It's fun, too. Why don't you surprise the whole family with a batch real soon like? Or maybe Mom would rather do it herself. But just make sure you got some Kellogg's Rice Krispies and Marshmallows on hand. Take it from your old pal Slim. Kellogg's Marshmallow Crispy Squares are mighty tasty eaten. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best, and how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Strange sounds in the night and his own keen senses gave Wild Bill Hickok a strong hunch that something was wrong in the little cabin on the shores of the lake. Sure enough, when Bill and Jingles got no answer to their knock on the door, Jingles looked in the window and discovered a dead man. Look, Bill. Slumped over the table. You're right. He's been shot, Jingles, but he may not be dead. Come on. It's locked. We'll have to break it down. Well, that's my specialty. Now just stand back and let me plow into it. Well, if this Jasper's still alive, he's going to need a new door. Let's have a look here. Whoever shot him must have been out on the lake. Bill, it looks like that bullet came right through that window. Yeah. We'll look into that later. He's still alive, Jingles. He is? With a hole like that in him? Build a fire. Put some water on the heat. We'll see what we can do for him. Then you'll have to ride to town and see if you can find a doctor. Well, we're here, Joker. Don't know whether anybody's up yet. It's hardly daylight. Well, Hansonville's a pretty little town, ain't it? 
Head for the hotel, boy. Might find somebody awake over there. Easy, Joker, now, oh, now, oh. I don't know whether there's a doctor here or not, but the clerk ought to know. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Sleeping on duty. Some Ooh. people have all the luck. Hey, wake up! <laughs> oh, go away. Well, he sleeps as sound as I do. Hey, wake up! <laughs> I ain't had a wink of sleep all night, and if I have to stay awake, you might as well do it, too. Yeah. Who is... Who is... Oh. oh. Howdy, stranger. Oh, howdy yourself. My name's Jingles. Uh, I guess I'm not awake yet. Ah. Could have sworn you said your name was Jingles. It is. Now, Jingles P. Jones, and I need a doctor. You do? Well, you look pretty healthy. Oh, I am healthy. Taint for me, you featherhead... I need a doctor for a man that got shot last night. Sure, got shot, huh? Well, happens all the time around here. Look, look, now, is there a doctor in this town or isn't there? Well, sure, pretty good one, too. Andy Peabody. Know Danny since he was about the size of a bush rabbit. Never could get used to calling him Doc, though. You want to see him? No, oh, of course I want to see him. Wild Bill and me stayed up all night just barely keeping this fellow alive. Now we need a doctor, and we need him in a hurry. You're okay. I'll get him for you. He lives here in the hotel. Well, get him and hurry up. Yeah, yeah. Well, where, where is this gent with a slug in him? Doc might want to know. In a cabin on the lake about two miles north of here. Two miles north? It, well, say, there must be Esri. Yeah, Esri Withers. He's got a cabin out there. Oh, he's a nice fella. Shot, huh? Yeah, shot and darn near killed. And if you don't get the doc in a big hurry, he ain't going to be a nice fella much longer. Yeah, okay, okay. I'll tell him about Esri. I'll be right back. Ooh, he getting that knucklehead to move is like prodding a mule with his ears laid back. I... Likes to take his time, doesn't he, stranger? Huh? Ooh. Oh, didn't see you standing there. My name is Darren. I'm the owner of the hotel and uh, one or two other places here in town. Well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Darren. My name's Jones. Jingles P. Jones. Yes, I heard you say that. And uh, you said something about Wild Bill being out at poor Ezra's cabin. That's right. That's my partner. Wild Bill Haycock. You've heard of him, ain't you? Oh, indeed I have. And you two came along in time to save poor Ezra's life? Well, so far we've saved it. If that doc will just shake it up a little. Tell me, uh, is uh, Ezra unconscious? Has he uh, talked at all? Not a bit. He was out cold when we found him, and he's still out, but he's alive. Say, Mr. Darren, maybe I could saddle a doctor's horse for him and maybe save a little time. Yes, yes, that's a good idea. He rides that big chestnut that's tied up with the picket rope and the black saddle out on the front porch is his. Well, tell him I'm out in front. I'll be glad to. Please, wake up, stupid. We've got work to do. Yeah, come on, come on. I was out half the night with you. Get up, get up. We've got trouble. Uh, what trouble? You said you'd take care of everything. This trouble is your fault. You missed last night. Ezra's still alive. What? That's right. The doctor's on his way out to the cabin now, and so are we. <laughs> what for? To take care of two real nosy gents who found Ezra and kept him alive. Here, here's the rifle, and here's two more of the silver bullets. No, no, not those. Yes, those. One is for the big gent named Jingles, and the other one's for his partner, Wild Bill Hecock. <laughs> Well, that's all I can do for him, Wild Bill. What do you think, Doc? We'll know more when he comes out from under the anesthetic. He has a slim chance, that's all. I hope he makes it. Well, if he does, Jingles, you and Bill can take the credit for saving his life. We don't want any credit, but I'd sure like to know why he was shot. Yeah, so would I. But I think I know how he was shot. How do you mean, Doc? Bill, have you still got the bullet I handed you when I took it out? Sure, it's here on the table. Look and see if it's made out of silver. Silver? Oh, that's local. Nobody makes bullets out of silver, Doc. Somebody made this one out of silver, Jingles. Take a look. Let me see. Well, what do you know? It is silver. <laughs> that makes five. Five silver bullets? Uh-huh. Five in the last five months. And this is the first one I've taken out with a man still alive. Bill, it looks to me like we've got a crazy killer on our hands. One thing's for sure, partner. What's that, Bill? We've got one that likes to advertise. <laughs> This should do fine, Blaze. We'll hide the horses in the trees. Get around them. 
Why didn't we use the canoe again? <laughs> Why didn't we use the canoe? It's stupid. It's broad daylight. It could be seen for miles if we came across the lake. Oh, now. Oh. Oh. This is much better. We'll just hide in these big rocks and watch the cabin. What are we watching for? We are watching to see who comes out. If it's the doctor, you keep quiet and let him go. If it's Wild Bill Hickok and that big deputy of his, you use the silver bullets. Darren, you're going to make a mistake someday, and I want to be around for your hanging. How can they hang me? I've never killed anyone. I've always been able to find trigger men like you. Men who could be forced to kill for me. I don't even carry a gun. That's right. You don't. I use my head blaze. That's why I've gradually taken over. I got the silver mine when Jennings died suddenly. Jennings was shot. That's right. I believe he was. You know darn well he was. No matter. After his death, I produced a deed to the mine. It's paid me very well. Then the hotel... Oh, stop bragging. I know how you got all the things you own, and I know what's happened to everybody that got in your way. That's right. And look down there. Where? Just coming out of the cabin. Two more men who are getting in my way. Here's the rifle, Blaze. Take care of them for me. And get Hickok first. But there... No argument. Shoot. And be sure you don't miss. Jumpin' Jiminy Slim, what's that? (laughs) That's the howl of a prairie wolf, Charlie. And a hungry howl at that. If you're sleeping out on the range alone, it's an important sound to know. Yeah, and another sound worth knowing is the snap, crackle, pop of Kellogg's Rice Krispies. It's a sound the whole world knows. It says good eating is on the way. A delicious breakfast of Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Pour on milk or cream, and Kellogg's Rice Krispies sound off snap, crackle, pop, telling everyone within earshot how fresh and crisp they are. Fresh and crisp from Kellogg's because they're tumble-toasted in giant rotary ovens. It's important to know the sound of a hungry wolf, Wranglers, but it's a darn sight more important to know the sound that means good eating. Snap, crackle, pop. That's the sound to keep a sharp ear out for. It's the sound only one cereal in the world makes. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Try them with frozen or canned peach slices on top for tomorrow's breakfast. Man alive, they're good. Setting a trap for Wild Bill and Jingles, the wily Darren and his trigger man Blaze hid in the rocks above the cabin. As Bill and Jingles stepped outside, Blaze loaded the rifle with the silver bullets and pulled the trigger. Get out, Jingles! Stand down and crawling behind the cabin already. Who in the heck's doing the shooting? I don't know. Is somebody up there in those rocks? Yeah, they sure had a beat on us. Yeah, I'm not so sure. That bullet hit the cabin wall a good six feet from us. Pretty bad shot, huh? Either that or he missed us on purpose. Uh, there's a hat moving up there, Bill. Yeah, I see it. Well, we can't hit him, Bill. They ran back in the trees. Listen. Horses are getting away. Get Buckshot and Joker. Let's get after them. <laughs> That's fine with me. I want to crack at those bushwhackers. Oh. I want to look at that bullet in the wall. Hey, Bill, is it safe to stick my head out now? I think so, Doc. They took one shot at us, then left in a hurry when we started shooting back. Any idea who it was? Nope, but this bullet I'm digging out may give me a clue. How's that? Now, wait a second. Yep, just as I thought. Take a look. Ah, silver. That's right. If we can catch those jaspers, we'll have our silver bullet killer. Here are the horses, Bill. All right, steady there, Buckshot. Good luck, Bill, and watch yourself. Whoever you're trailing's mighty dangerous. You know something, Doc? So is Bill. Get around, Joker. Hi! Go, oh, Buckshot. Jeff, Joker, let's run down that local coyote with the silver bullet. Ha, 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 There they are, Bill. Those horses can't stay out in front of Buckshot and Joker. Come on, boy. Run them down. Let's not run them down too fast. I don't want one of them silver slugs in my ribs. They'll have to stop if they want a good shot at us. They are stopping. Look out. Look, they're fighting over that rifle. Get in there fast, Jingles. What the heck? 
They only got one gun between them. We'll soon find out. Whoa, whoa, watch out. Whoa, whoa, Joker, whoa. All right, hold it right there and get your hands up. Give me that rifle. If you won't kill them, I will. You're not going to kill anybody. Now give me that rifle. Take it. Take it. Don't let this crazy fool get his hands on it. Now just simmer down. Bill. This is Mr. Darren that owns the hotel. That's right, and he owns about everything else in town, too. Shut up, Blaze. You stop talking, I will start remembering things about you. I don't care. Marshal Hickok, I killed a man once in a fight, and Darren here has been holding that over my head to try to make me do his silver bullet killings for him. You fool! That ruins your little game, doesn't it, Darren? Blaze, are you the one that shot at us a while ago? Yeah, but I missed on purpose. That's what I thought. Turn around, Darren. We'll take you both to jail and straighten us all out. No, you won't. Look out for him, Bill. I will. Let him have it, Wild Bill. Looks like you haven't got any friends at all, Darren. I don't need friends. You're pretty tough, aren't you? Darren, tough enough for you. We'll see. Oh. Oh. Certainly glad I'm on your side, Wild Bill. Thanks, Blaze. I'll see if I can't get you a break for helping us out. Hit him so hard, we're going to have to wait a while to start asking him questions. Oh, I can tell you all about him. And the men he got to do the killings for him. That'll be a big help, Blaze. And if you look in his pockets, you'll find some more of those silver bullets. Good! I want one of those for a souvenir. To remind you of the silver bullet killer? No. To remind me not to listen to your hunches, Bill Hickok. You had a hunch last night, and I haven't been to bed since. I'm a growing boy, and I need my sleep. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. Andy, why don't you tell our friends about next Monday's show? Okay, Guy. You know, ordinarily, a little arithmetic problem doesn't bother us. But wait till you hear the trouble Wild Bill and Jingles get into in our story called... Two plus two. So long, kids. See you Monday. Choo, choo, choose your favorite in Kellogg's variety pack. So mom and dad and kitties too. Choose a Kellogg's cereal is good for you. In Kellogg's variety pack, you'll find many favorites like cornflakes, rice krispies, and the new ready sweetened treats, all in generous individual serving size boxes. So choo, choo. Choose your favorite Kellogg's Variety Pack! Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Alan Reed, Vic Perrin, Forrest Lewis, and Dusty Walker. Our story was written and directed by Paul Pierce, music by Dick Aram. This is a David Heyer production, transcribed in Hollywood. Now, this is Charlie Lyon, speaking for Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, reminding you to listen again Monday, same time, same station, for another adventure of... Wild Bill Hickok! (laughs) 